This is session T24 on printers. I know we've been anticipating this session for a while. Um, first, I wanted to ask a question. Does anyone have any experiences with printers? Okay, have you had good experiences with them, Oscar? Just know how to go on the computer and print them out, print out some papers. <laughs> I mean, they they do have their uses. They can be useful. They just have problems sometimes, and that's the exciting part when we're able to troubleshoot and fix those problems. Sometimes they act out and yeah. get you frustrated. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yes. Yeah. I have the same problem. I have a scanner and printer, and sometimes it doesn't scan, it just prints. Let's say it's not connected, but it's connected for printing. It's a wire connector. Yeah, so these are some very, very common issues. And the thing is, we do have to take care of them when we have them, and when we're servicing clients or at a job, they're important to they're important to the aspects of many jobs. So today the objectives will be one, to compare and contrast different types of printers, um, two, identify common steps for installing printers, three, identify common pitfalls when installing a printer, and four, identifying common problems that come up with printers and describe how to solve them as you guys were speaking on earlier. Key BSMs, behavioral skill communication, and mindset personal responsibility. So there are four major categories of printers. There's the impact printer, the inkjet, thermal printer, and laser printer that we're going to discuss today. Impact printer features. Can I have someone to read the slide? I'll go. Oh. <laughs> okay, Oscar. Uh, impact printer features. Printer that creates an image on paper by physically striking an ink ribbon against the paper surface. Uh, best known impact printer is a dot matrix printer. A print head moves across the width of the paper. Pins are used to print matrix of dots on the page. Uh, pins shoot against a cloth ribbon, and the ribbon impacts paper and deposits ink. Uh, they are slow and noisy. Um, dot printer, sorry, dot matrix printer technology advantages, continuous tractor feed allows the event and data logging, and you can use carbon paper, so you can print multiple copies, use on OS, um, and they're also extremely durable. Thank you. Has anyone used an impact printer before? You have Oscar, anyone else, and Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I was thinking of like an example of something that's close to, has anyone used a typewriter, an original typewriter with the metal striking? This is, that's what reminds me of an impact printer because you have to have the ribbon and it strikes the ribbon. So think of it that way. Also important about impact printers is they can print multiple copies using carbon paper because of the impact and the pressure. So keep that in your mind. And here's an example of an impact printer. It shows the upper cover, the platen knob, the power switch, and the sheet guide. Anything you want to add to this, Kelly? In your experience? Just the, well, just the main thing is, is you have to take away from this is it's impact, physical contact. You know, it's actually touching the ribbon and transferring that to the page. And then the main 
statement that will always bring you back to impact is multi-part forms. They love asking about multi-part forms. Yes, you do still see impact printers today, typically in warehouses, auto repair shops, things like that because of their durability. So that's the only thing I would add to that. Yes, the multi, the multi-part paper form. Yeah, you probably got three questions that I don't need plus. Multi-part form. <laughs> and impact printers. Mm -hmm. Yes, keep that in mind. Thank you. Now we move on to inkjet printer features. Can I have a volunteer for this slide? Yeah, I can read it. Thank you, that's it. Use, um, use the print, the printhead connected to carriage that contain the link, the contain the ink. A belt and motor move the carriage back, back and forth so the ink can cover the whole page. A sprays um, ionized ink onto paper to from image using matrix of small dots, then print ahead move across paper as one line of text is created with each pass. The ink is stored in a special small container called ink. Cartridges. Print resolution is measured in dot per inch DPI and the print speed in page per minute PPM. Some use duplex assembly, assemblies that enable to print on the both side, provide good quality, reasonable fast printing, produce color as well as black and white image. Thank you. So how many of us are familiar with inkjet printers? Okay, are we familiar with those expensive cartridges for ink <laughs> for replacement? Oh yeah, the, the printer the printer is free, but that's how they get you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Monumentally. Monumentally. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So the difference is that this is not so much like the impact printer, but it's spraying using the cartridge and spraying the ionized ink to the paper. And it's not using a ribbon. Okay. And now we have a, a printer image where it talks about step one, the heating element, the tube containing ink, the nozzle inside the print head, heating element heaps up, forming a bubble in the ink. Growing bubble forces ink from the tube. And this is giving you the various components. And of course, you know, when we're going through these slides and you see printer images like this, I would take a screenshot of it um, just for your use for informational purposes. Anything else you'd like to add, Kelly? Nope. I mean, other than like the reason for that cost, everybody kind of gripes about the cost of the ink and stuff like that. And that, unfortunately, where that comes from is the vast majority of the technology with regards to an ink jet printer resides in that cartridge. That's where the print head assembly, that's everything, is inside that ink cartridge. And um, that's part of it. And then the, the uh, other thing with regards to ink cartridges, I understand real life can be different with regards to the, to the exam. You do not ever refill cartridges. That's right. You use the manufacturer's cartridges only. And that is because slight variations in ink viscosity or how thick the ink is can affect how the dots will be distributed on the page, whether they'll be too big, they won't be able to you know, come out at all because it's too thick. Um, so your color blends can get 
drastically off just because of the change in the thickness of the ink when you refill the cartridge with an ink that is not standard for it. So that is the, uh, the other thing, yes, blending. Exactly, Greg. Yeah, so well, you know, well, the HP well. print that I have, when you put uh, a cartridge there, you know, the proper one, it will tell you. You see it on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I'm saying is that some people will take empty cartridges and refill them. Yeah, that's a risky business. <laughs> so somebody will, will take ink and put it back into the cartridge, refilling the cartridge. And that's where some of the problems can occur. A lot of times, yeah, you're right. And a problem can occur when someone throws away your perfectly full cartridge in the trash thinking that is empty. And there and goes they take a little plastic thing off the front. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. It's a loss. Oh, well. <laughs> yes. OK, so now we're going to move on to thermal printer features. The description here is it uses heat to create an image. And who can read the rest of the slide? I got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, thermal <coughs> printer features description use heat to create an image. Uh, two type of thermal printers: direct thermal printers burn dots onto special coated paper, thermal paper, and often used as receipt printer. Thermal transfer printers use a ribbon that contains wax-based ink. Heating element melts ribbon onto thermal paper used to print receipt, barcode labels, closing labels, or container labels. Reliable and easy to maintain. Thank you. Um, I think about thermal printers a lot of times when like, or you can think of it, when you're at the store and you get a receipt, they may use thermal printers for that. Um, a lot of times that receipt that's supposed to last for, I don't know, uh, <laughs> a year will disappear in less than two weeks. Maybe because of heat in the car for various reasons, it just starts to disappear. Yep. Um, also on, um, I believe they use it on uh, uh, price tags. Shipping. Oh, yes, shipping. Price tags. Okay. Shipping okay. labels. And they're extremely fast. Too. Just shade that they easily, like it out. Yeah. Okay. And here's an image for the thermal printers talking about the thermal element, the sheet label, the hot melt ink, backing ribbon, the transfer ink, the binder process. Anything else you'd like to add, Kelly? No, it's a pretty good self-explanatory image on this one. Yeah, just thermal printers mechanically are simple, simpler than the others, and uh, pretty quick. I have a question. Are we going to have to know how to, um, like, the parts of each printer when taking a test? To a degree, yes. Because if they start mentioning certain types of parts, you'll need to know which kind of printer that would allude to. Okay. So, you know, if I say, you know, if I start talking about ink for one thing, if I specifically say ink, I'm talking about an inkjet. If I say printer ribbon, I'm talking about a impact printer. So right. we right. need to know based off of some of these elements or how they work, what we're, you know, because if somebody's calling, we'll need to pick up on what it is they're, work, they're dealing with or working with. And um, chapter five in the Cybex book speaks on the printers. And it's just sometimes we may, you know, go through the chapters, but it's good to really peruse that chapter when it comes to printers and the mediums and yeah. the troubleshooting. You're looking at a close to 10 questions on the uh, A plus that are going to be printer based. So, yeah, 
you are. And at the end of that chapter, there are the review questions. I recommend doing all of the review questions for the printers. Um, they're especially helpful. I found them helpful. And they give the explanation as well. Now, laser printer features. And who would give me the pleasure of reading this slide? I will. <laughs> OK, thank you, Gally. <laughs> Laser printer features produce high quality and high speed at, of test and graphic using the process of uh, electro photographic image imaging. Use toner, which is more permanent than ink, a non-impact device that's pricely, pricely, I don't know, place tuna on paper. Range from low volume, personal use to high volume, multi-user multi -user use, are more expensive to purchase, but cheaper to operate. Color printing is the writing process repeated for four times from four tuna, a cartridge, black, see, see, is that senior? Cheyenne. Cheyenne? Yeah. Magneta and yellow. The black tones, the black tones typically, typically carbon melt mixed with a polyester resin, white color tuna, trend carbon for other pigments. Thank you so much. Um, the, te the takeaways from this slide is, is laser printers are non-impact. Um, they, they use toner cartridges, so there's not ink. And um, the toner is, is a mix of resin and carbon, I believe, in like a powder format. Mm. Um, and generally speaking, you know, laser printers can be like, I don't know, I've seen them as small as a foot by a foot, but they can be larger than a person and bigger than that. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> they can be very complex printing machines and usually <coughs> for technical support, you usually have to call the company to come if they're gonna fix that or replace components in that. Are they really common? Laser printers? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Recently. Yeah. They In the used last to... 10 years or so. Mm. A lot almost of offices like, use them. Almost 20 years old. Yeah. Are they like really big kind of printers or? They can be from like a small box shaped one that you would have on your desktop to okay. massive printers. Yeah. So they can go yeah. from you know, I've not one before, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an image of the laser printer components, um, which I feel like Kelly is really good at explaining all of this. <laughs> <laughs> so laser components, as it is a laser printer, wouldn't be fair if they called it that without actually having the laser in it. So basically you have a stationary laser and it uses a mirror to basically etch this image onto a photosensitive drum, which is this piece right here. And so with light, it draws your picture onto that page. And then through the seven step process, the toner will get attracted to the drum and then onto the page and all that kind of fun stuff, which we're gonna get into here very shortly. Uh, you have this here, which is called a charging corona. It is a wire that creates a significant negative charge onto the drum. At this point, it's kind of, what it does is it's erasing it from its previous image and setting it up with that negative charge to be able to create that new image. And once that charge is done, it'll be etched in and then transferred, so. 
We'll kind of move in here a little bit. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Sure. We'll talk about the seven steps. You do need to be very aware of the seven steps. This again was one of those lists that I wrote down every single day when I came in, like my 802.11s, my port numbers, my troubleshooting steps. This was on that list of things that I wrote down until I got it down pat. So there are two mnemonics you can use for remembering the printer steps in order. There's a, a G version and an R version. We'll tell you both. You can pick whichever one you want to remember it, although nobody ever seems to remember the, the G version. I don't know why. Um, but step one. Processing. This is the CPU creating that image, sending it over to the printer. The printer is processing it, getting it in the print spooler, getting it ready to, you know, set that image up on the drum. So processing that image. Once this is done, we move on to charging. It says conditioning, but I've never heard anybody use the term conditioning. Charging is the term most frequently used. And that is where that charging, that corona wire, will put a uniform negative 600 to negative 1,000 volt charge on that photoelectric drop. So it's creating a massive negative charge on that drum. Then, we move on to exposing. So we've processed it, we've charged the, the drum. Now we need to expose it to the image we wish to write upon it. So we're gonna be exposing. The laser is going to etch that image that we want transferred onto the paper by using light. As the light is hitting that drum, it is lowering the charge. So the charge is going from about negative 600 to negative 1000 all the way down to negative 100. So it's creating a disparity between the charge of the rest of the drum and where the laser has hit it. So that's gonna be less negative than the drum, the rest of the drum. And that will be our image. And that is exposing it to the laser. Next, we will move to developing. So, development at this point, the, uh, that negative, that lesser negative charge, once it moves through the toner drum, it will attract the toner to those sections on it, essentially creating that image, drawing out that image in the particles of toner on the drum. And that's the developing. So it's starting to develop that image on the drum with the toner. And then we will move to our next stage, which is transferring. Now, what, trans what happens with transferring, finally, the paper is coming into uh, the picture and the transfer corona, which is another corona wire, gives the paper a positive 600 to 1000 charge, volt charge. And that positive charge is going to attract those particles from the drum to the page. So it gives that charge the particles from the drum, as the drum is passing close to that page, they're getting pulled from the drum down to the page. No contact is made. It's just transferring the toner from the drum to the page and moving on to the next step. Now, the toner is sitting on that page, but it's basically being held there by kind of like static electricity. You know, like when you used to rub a balloon and then you would stick it on the wall and it would hold itself to the wall. That's kind of like what's going on here. The toner is being held on by static electricity. So we have to give it a more permanent fixture. So next we're gonna fuse it to the page. So it'll move between two rollers that have heating elements in them. So these, tone, these rollers are gonna heat up that toner, melt it down into the page. And then as they go through the roller, the roller is gonna press it down in. So it is a fusing process where everything is getting fused to the page. And it's more permanent fixture. If you ever, if you know, for those of you who've used uh, laser printers, you notice when the page comes out, it's almost hot. So you pick them out, it's warm or almost hot. That's why it's that fusing mechanism that's cooking the, the toner down into the page or that polyester resin. And then finally, after all this, the drum needs to 
clear itself and prepare itself for the next image. So it goes by, since it's photosensitive, light helps erase it. So there is something called an erasure lamp on the drum. And so it's a really, really bright light that erases the drum as the drum is moving around. And then as it passes the lamp, it goes by the transfer corona, resets the charge, and the whole process starts over again. And it keeps running through this cycle for every image and page that you're sending through the laser printer. If you're doing color, it does four passes, one for each color of toner that you're using. So if you can go back real quick. So we have back one image. So we have processing, charging. We go to our next page. Exposing, developing, transferring, fusing, and cleaning. Seven steps. And we have to remember them in order what they do. So the mnemonic, the G mnemonic for it is please come every day to feel complete. So that's your seven steps right there. The other mnemonic, I think this is why Rachel wanted me to do this. She didn't want to cuss. Uh, the other mnemonic <laughs> is printers can't even do the effing cleaning. I mean, you could say final cleaning. I mean, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so printers can't even do that completely. that's the other one everybody always seems to use the later one they never seem to use the earlier one it's whichever one you wish it just helps you remember the seven steps in order i know there's two c's but cleaning always comes at the end so that's where you know that'll let you know that the first c was charging so well there you go First time I saw a commercial on that Oscar, I thought he actually dropped it on prime time. I was like, really? <laughs> and then after later, I was like, oh, okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> Go back to the first slide for a second so I can take a screenshot. Can you what? Yeah, a screenshot of the first one. First screen. Yeah, sure. Can we go back one more slide, please, Rachel? One more than this one? Yeah, this is the one right here. That's it. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. I cannot stress enough. They love asking about the seven steps of laser printing. So please familiarize yourself with this, with this, the processes. And the nice thing is, is if you're having difficulty or you're troubleshooting, what's happening can lead you to the exact step as to where the problem's occurring. Yeah, they ask a lot of questions about the primary corona and fusing. Mm -hmm. Very true. Okay. I will hand it back over to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't think anybody, anyone's videos are better than that, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's just because I'm awesome. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Not gonna argue. No, I do. I do. <laughs> talk that talk. Talk that talk, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Virtual printers. Can I have a volunteer for this slide? I can I can read it. Hold on. Uh, Mitch has her hand up. So I'm gonna call on oh, her first. Sorry. Maybe the next slide, okay? Not enough. Virtual printers. Virtual printing that is not really printing at all but a way to convert a document to a particular format print to file produces a file that can be later printed without access to the program that created it print to pdf it produces an adobe pdf instead of a printout a virtual pdf printer can be downloaded from Adobe or other third party software. Print to XPS. An X 
XPS document is a standardized open format and is Microsoft's answer the PDF. It is always offered as a printer type in Windows. Print to image is somewhat like scanning because it creates an image of the document. It saves into a regular image file like BMP, GIF, JPG, PNG, TIFF, and more. Thank you so much. So virtual printers, um, you may come across this um, sometimes uh, if you're downloading certain documents or files, instead of printing, you'll do print to PDF or print to XPS or print to file or print to image, which will give you a bitmap, GIF or JPEG or PNG or TIFF file. Um, the important one of the important takeaways to this is that the print to PDF it's more uh, operating system friendly, I believe, than the print to XPS. So um, please remember that. Okay, common features of all printers. Um, Madana, do you want to read the printer properties box? What's under there? Okay. Thank you. Printer properties box. Uh, adjust page orientation. Resolution. Collation. Paper sizes, types, and source. Manage duplex printing and print a text page. And I think a lot of us are familiar with that uh, when we're printing because we're able to change certain aspects of the printing, uh, the page we want to print, the orientation, where there's a double-sided collation, and we can always print a test page to make sure our printer is connected in printing. Now, um, the other side says printing language, communication methods between OS and the printer. So printers may use ASCII for simple text. Some printers use PostScript developed by Adobe. Image processing is done by the printer and not the PCU's, I mean, excuse me, the PC's CPU. Others use PCL, which is printer control language commands developed by HP. It doesn't support advanced graphical functions though. Windows uses GDI, um, graphics device interface, which is kind of a, a legacy Windows component, but it handles print functions, then sends it to the printer or sends it uh, to your screen. And Windows 7, Vista uses XML paper specifications, uh, XPS, which has some improvements over GDI like color enhancement. So it's uh, like extensible markup language for more features. Okay, connecting and installing basics. Can I have a reader for this slide? I can read it. I can read it. Oh, you can go ahead if you want. Yeah, go ahead, don't worry. Okay, printers can connect to a local computer or a network. Local computers connect through USB, Wi-Fi, serial, or parallel ports. Network computers connect through Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Most local computers are plug-and-play compatible, but all requires drivers to communicate with computers. Windows 7 has many drivers built in, or drivers can be downloaded from manufacturer websites. Use either 32-bit drivers for a 32-bit OS or 64-bit drivers for a 64-bit OS. Okay, thank you so much, Danielle. So what makes a printer, how do you know whether a printer is a connected to a local computer or networked? What's the difference usually? Local computer is usually connected by some kind of cord or a wireless, a wireless um, interface 
while network printer uh, would be connected via IP address? Absolutely. Absolutely. And where can we find drivers for our printers? The manufacturer's website. If we do not already have local drivers, but it's the best place to get it is the manufacturer's website. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Connecting and installing basics. Can I have a volunteer? Hi. Hi. I can do it. I meant I as I. Should I go ahead? Um, you can go ahead. All right. Um connecting and installing base basics. Basic look local steps, plug printer and connector into the port or network. You, two, you can turn on the printer. If installing drivers from manufacturer's program, launch printer setup program, follow directions. If using the Windows installation process, open printer and faxes window, click add a printer, Follow add printer with wizard directions and print a text a test page. Thank you. Are most of us familiar with this process? Have we've added our own printers? Maybe at home. Good, good. Now we're going to talk about print servers. And was it you, Dang, that wanted to read before? Uh, yes. Thank you. Print service, hardware or software that manages print jobs sent to one or more printers on a network. Can be a can be dedicated hardware device with software installed on a computer on the network, programs embedded in firmware on a printer. Embedded firmware print server can be used to manage print jobs, view printer status, see job history, and check counters. Util utilities can be accessed through a browser, Windows print management monitors and manages printer queues for all printers on a network. In print management, each computer on the network that shares a printer is considered a print server. Thank you. So print servers can be hardware um, and it can be a box or it could be set up on the computer. It could be software. Um, what would be the advantage of having a print server, do you think? Everybody wants. Uh, central, central management. Yeah, central management. And you know what happens sometimes? There's a problem when you're sharing from somebody's workstation. Um, there are difficulties and, and troubles that occur that can occur. Okay, steps to share an installed printer. Windows 7, make sure you turn on file and print sharing is selected. Turn on file and the print sharing is selected. In Windows 8.1, print sharing must be turned on. Basic steps for Windows 7, 8, and 10, open properties dialog box, select sharing, select share this printer, enter the name of the printer and make sure the drivers are available. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. You know what they're thinking right now. What? I don't know. Is there, Is there a lab for go? this? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what you were saying. <laughs> we Is there a lab for this? this? <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. Thank you, Greg. 
glad you asked. <laughs> that's, that's <okay. laughs> yes, I believe there are many labs, <laughs> not just one. Steps to install a shared printer. Can I have a volunteer? All right, I'll jump in. There are two ways to install a shared printer. Use Windows Explorer and then network or network places window. Use control panel, oh, sorry, two. Use control panel devices and printers window in Windows 7. In Windows 8, use control panel, hardware and sound. Click advanced printer setup. Then on this new screen, select the third radio button option for add a printer using TCP IP address or host name. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do find this slide important because I believe I had questions regarding how do you share a printer, whether it's uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8. And sometimes we take things for granted, like we know where everything is. <laughs> but sometimes there's a little bit of a difference. So I would just take a, a screenshot. Okay, managing the printer queue. Who would like to read? Remember, this is all for you, Rebecca. Thank you. you can read it. Man managing the printer queue. Access the printer queue by double clicking the printer icon either in the device and printers window or the taskbar when active. Spooled printer print job are displayed. Options are available through the toolbar, including post printer, cancel, cancel a printer job, or print job. Yes, thank you. This is a very important area we come to to cancel print jobs and see what jobs are being queued. Or perhaps maybe there's a problem, maybe a job is paused. So it's also used for troubleshooting. Routine maintenance. Okay, routine cleaning. Extends a printer's working life. Um, follow the manufacturer's directions for device use. Clean the outside of the printer using a damp cloth and outside with a dry cloth. Okay. I had to make sure I read that correctly. <laughs> never, never, yeah. never use compressed air. <laughs> I see that right there. You saw, um, clean outside of printer using a damp cloth and outside with the dry cloth. Um, should it be outside of the damp cloth and, dry, and inside of the dry cloth? Is that what it should be? Because it said outside, outside. Yeah. I know. Um, and, uh, and Kelly, I think to me, for the outside is okay for both. You know why? Because I've cleaned ketchup off of a printer. <laughs> yeah, but but I'm wondering the intent of the the, the, the sentence though. The intent seems like it, they were saying clean outside with a damp and clean inside with a dry. I'm thinking that outside outside should be outside inside. What do you, what do you think, you, Kelly? Have, I sorry. I would not use a cloth to clean the inside of a printer personally. Yeah. So there uh -huh. shouldn't be anything inside, nothing yeah. damp, nothing dry. I mean, because particles and things will get in there and it will cause a problem. Okay. Okay. So that could just easily said or dry or damp cloth. That's what they could have said, right? Yeah. Okay. But I'm outside, outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Just want to see if it was an error. Okay. Okay. Um, never, never use compressed air. Never, never use ammonia-based cleaners. 
Use only safe tools such as toner certified vacuum cleaners and extension magnet brushes. Uh, printer software may contain program to complete clean inkjet nozzles, as well as calibration and head alignment. Um, we find that important also for troubleshooting. And printer maintenance kit, printer specific with step-by-step -step instructions for cleaning. So what do we never, never want to use again? Compress air. Good God. Why? I ruined. No, because I, 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 that was a $150. Um, it was a very expensive lesson for me. OK. Because <laughs> you blow the like, debris further into the printer. Yes. Well, what I did was actually, the, it, it became like like frost. It fr I don't know the charge, I guess, on the roller. Oh, you did it on toner. Well, well, I was blowing because the toner was all over the place. I was just trying oh, to get it out. Oh, dude. OK. <laughs> yeah, so it just frosted up the whole thing and it stopped printing. So I just had to buy a new kit, the whole kit. Good thing it was on sale. The kit originally cost, well, this is my house, my home one um, for the kids. Um, and I initially, it was for like 300 and something, and I got it for like 150. So it wasn't too bad. I needed one anyway. Okay. I still mourn for you. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mourn for your electronic equipment. <laughs> I'm more for that 150. That's what I'm more for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. This says overarching problem solving tips. What does that mean? What, overarching? Yes. Just kind of like big general problem solving tips. Oh, okay. I have never seen that word before. <laughs> okay. So when problems arise, remember to document everything and start with simple solutions. Verify the printer is on and that is connected to the computer. You can also use online support by searching manufacturer's website um, to update device drivers and replacement parts if you need them and additional software. And of course, sometimes they have troubleshooting tips. Sometimes. Okay, problem solving strategies, local printer problems. Who would like to read problems with the printer? Is that you again, Rebecca, or is your hand still up? Oh, I can read it. Okay. Problems with printer. Step to, dry, step to try. Verify the printer is on, on, then try printing a test, a test page. If the test page does not print, use the troubleshooting in the windows to, to locate the issue. Out of memory error. A steps to try. Internal RAM memories hold print jobs, print, print jobs and and font so adding ex extra memory can sp uh, can speed up performance. Thank you very much. Okay, problem solving strategies, network connectivity problems, verify printer is the default, check printer's IP address, verify printer is online, reboot the computer, Uninstall and then reinstall printer. Use diagnostic utilities or software. Okay. And does anybody know how we can check the printer's IP address? Let's say it's a laser printer. Not a trick question, I promise. No, it's not. Is that on properties? Um, yes, it can be properties. It's about, about four Go ways ahead. you can do it. Yeah, um, I was going to expect you to answer, Greg. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 always, I always pause. I, I wait a little while. You know, That's for nice. I appreciate um, that. OK, you can check. Well, if it's already installed, you can check from somebody that already has it installed um, You know, by looking at their properties, their printer properties to see the IP address that way. 
Um, you can actually go to the display. Usually they have a small little display in front and go to the network um, setup and see the IP address there. Um, sometimes you'll see um, the manufacturer information might pr provide you steps to get to the default IP address. Or if there's a documentation of that IP address being changed, you go to that IP address. Um, yes. Yeah, several ways. Yeah. You can do a port scan and, and look for the name as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree, IP or something like that. Yeah, there are a few ways to do that. It's just sometimes when it's in the printer, you know, uh, panel, uh, sometimes it's not in the most obvious places. So you have to really look at the documentation or the website or just kind of look uh, levels deep into the menu. Problem solving strategies shared printer problems. Print a test page from the local computer, verify correct default printer selected and online. At remote computer, verify access to the computer which the printer attached, to which the, the printer is attached, or delete printer and reinstall and verify hard drive space. Problem solving strategies, printing from Windows applications. Can I have a reader for this slide? Oscar volunteered, Kevin. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, I have Kevin... a question. Hi, go ahead. Um, the last two slides, he said um, increase the RAM, increase the internal RAM for the printer. Mm -hmm. So, oh, printers have RAM? Printers do have RAM. Okay. Right. And larger industrial or enterprise printers will actually have extra memory slots you can install it. Yeah. Yeah. It, never know you need it until you need it. Yeah. <laughs> that is a The same yes. type as the, um, the ones you find on the motherboard. Likely it would be like a SODAM or something like that, not necessarily it's, a full okay. size RAM. It's a smaller size. It's, yeah. it's usually small. You're welcome. Okay, well, who can read the slide? Is Kevin available? Can I read it? Oh, sure, Mohammed. Problem solving strategy, strategies, printing from windows or applications. Delete all print jobs in the printer's queue. Verify correct printer selected and online. Verify cable connections. Stop and restart Windows print spooler service. Delete printer and reinstall. Check for updated driver. Try to print to a file. Verify that enough hard drive space is available. Print from safe mode. Yes, thank you so much. Did anybody know that verifying that enough hard drive space is available would be important? Does that surprise anyone? Yeah, it's just very interesting. Kevin's okay. back. Hmm? Kevin's back. He's back. <laughs> He's ready to read. Okay, Kevin, can you read for us the poor print quality general? The poor, the, the, uh, the whole thing or just like? Do you mind reading the whole thing? No, not at all. Thank you. Uh, garbled characters on paper, oh boy. Um, cancel all print jobs in the queue and try printing a different document from the same application. Print using a different application altogether. Is USB cable securely connected at both ends? Uh, power down printer by pressing a reset button. Update the printer drivers. Uh, the printer might need servicing. Uh, wrong print colors. Some paper is designed to print on only one side. Try flipping the paper over. Adjust the quality of print. Uh, for an inkjet printer, 
try cleaning the ink cartridges and calibrating the printer. For a laser printer, try calibrating the printer. Thank you. And that calibrating printer is very important. You will see that on the test as far as troubleshooting is concerned for and printers. Anytime you see garbled text, instantly go to drivers. Yes. So if you hear that term garbled text, funny characters, something like that, go to drivers. And that is absolute. Mm -hmm. Poor print quality laser printers. Can I have another volunteer? Oscar? Poor print quality laser printers can be caused by printer drivers, application windows, or the printer. Uh, poor print quality for laser printers, you would unplug the printer and allow it to cool for 30 minutes, rock or replace the toner cartridge. Econo mode, which uses less toner, might be on, so turn that off. Uh, paper quality might not be high enough. Printer might need cleaning. Uh, ensure the printer does not require routine maintenance. The laser drum might need replacing. These, this distorted images can be caused by foreign material. If the page has a gray background, the image drum is worn out and needs replacing. They have ghosted images are usually caused by a problem with the image drum. Okay, this slide right here, I would screenshot it, it has a lot of practical, important information um, regarding printer problems and troubles. Um, and they will ask you questions regarding uh, distortions and ghosted images, um, why they occur, or the possibilities. Um, and it's important, yeah, the econo mode uses less toner, might be turned on. Um, so let's see. Distorted images can be caused by foreign materials. So there can be dust or debris that get in there. There could even, I found earrings in a laser printer. So what were you can, doing, Rachel? <laughs> that can be a problem. Is what, what were people in my office, what were they doing? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Crackers, earrings. <laughs> the moment you mention it, oh, that's where that went. <laughs> Hopefully, everybody got a screenshot. And um, this toner cartridge, uh, sometimes you can rock the cartridge. Do not than, shake. Then replace. <laughs> yes. So, for instance, let's pretend this is the toner cartridge. It's almost about the size, but not the depth. They can be like three inches deep or bigger, but you rock it by the edges like that. By the edges yeah. and not shake because it will be on your clothes and you can't get it off. So how there do we are... clean the inside parts? Let's say Sprinter might need cleaning. Well, there may be no. a kit like there would be rare cases where you would use a cloth inside but you would use a like a microfiber or something that's not going to leave lint behind but it would be individual rollers that you would be cleaning but we will talk about that here in a little bit um, but they also may have a cleaning kit again they have like the brushes and the vacuums for the laser printers for a inkjet you could probably get away with the cloth on the inside the print heads are cleaned by a wet sponge, so you may need to re-moisten the sponge so that it can clean off all like dried ink or debris from the front of the print head so that the printing can be clear, stuff like that. That's what they meant by cleaning the print head. Um, that's what I can, all I can think of right now. Dot matrix, you can definitely get away with that. 
brother has um something I just um not very long ago bought for the brother I have um laser. Um, but it's kind of like a I don't know if it's like charged or something, but now that I'm hearing about a charge, but it's a special paper, it's kind of sticky. And um, you basically put it through and you, you you go to a clean function on the printer and it um, okay. spends a while there just, you know, releasing all of the heads and so forth, going through the rollers. So it grabs all the stuff and it comes on and it looks pretty. It looks like you printed a black page or a wow. colored page. It's all the, all the spare debris that's been floating around in there. Yeah, I think. That's neat. But now that I know about it, because I didn't actually know that it does two levels of charging. I thought it was just one. I didn't realize it does a positive and a negative or a negative then a positive i should say to mm -hmm. to um yeah well the what you're talking about would not touch that drum the drum no, but is i wonder in, the drum I wonder is if the paper the has yeah i was wondering if the, the paper has some other charge or maybe higher charge that you know attracts even more you know what i mean like to clean it up that's what i'm wondering well what it is is they're likely not using the charge to attract it from the drum they're using the stickiness to get it off the rollers Mm, okay, okay, fair enough. Look at it, look at it. That says 1.3 million Naira take a lot. Got it. Okay, <laughs> I was looking for it. <laughs> All On right. It. Okay, laser printer problems, solutions. Um, another screenshot worthy very screenshot worthy page mm -hmm. and may i have a reader or let Black, me uh, i can read it okay. blank pages um laser princess problems um solutions blank pages out of tona try diagnostic print if not check power supply um dirty printouts fuser is not reaching proper temperature clean printer try using a lightweight paper if not change fuser ghosting imaging drum is not fully discharged allow some time to cool down or lower the, resol the resolution or print and landscape orientation vertical white lines toner is clogged shake the toner if not change it Blotchy print, uneven disposition of toner, shake the toner, check fusing rollers and drum for foreign objects. And complete character, characters, adjust the printed um, density. Crease pages, restart printer or try different paper type. Paper jams, restart printer or follow steps from manufacturer. Pulling multiple sheets, humidity, or too much paper. Thank you, Ebony. Awesome. So, Ebony's hey. back. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear. So, this page, pay attention to it, pay attention to it, pay attention to it. Ghosting an image, imaging drum is not fully discharged. Okay. Dirty printout. Fuser is not reaching the proper temperature. Blank pages out of toner. The uh, yeah. dirty printout ones. Does everybody understand what they mean when they're talking about lighter weight paper? Pound weight. Yeah. They mean not that heavy cardboard type paper. Yeah, you're right on it. So like you, you know, like when you when you used to print out resumes and they were that thicker, fancier paper, how they what they call that is a heavier weight. So the thickness of the pounds. paper is called the weight of the paper. So if your printer is is calibrated, because you can adjust this in your settings, if it's calibrated for a standard thickness page, like you would use in a normal office paper, and then you'd put in a fancier like resume paper and put it through. The fusers may not come up to temperature high enough to get it to where the page could be hot enough to melt the resin because it's thicker. That's what they're talking about with the lighter weight paper. So if it's not quite there, if you're using a heavier gauge paper than you normally would, you would go back to a lighter gauge and see if it's the 
settings for the fuser that's causing the problem. If it doesn't right. matter if you go back to the regular stage, then it's likely your fuser's going bad. You may see a question like that, what he was explaining. Okay. There's Is anybody... one... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No. I was gonna say, there's one more that's not on here, but may come up. Let's see if my annotator works. So. Do I need to stop share? No, you're fine. Oh, okay. So if I get like a smudge, and we're, we're gonna pretend like these are identical. And it's like, you keep seeing that exact same smudge in a regular interval on the page. What could this mean? Just thoughts. There's something, um, well, <laughs> this is the exact same issue I was trying to blow out, um, but it could be an issue with, um, the roller itself um, is you know, dirty yeah it could be the roller dirty okay. or it could could be that that part of the um I, mean, I don't want to say fuser but something could be wrong with that part where it's not actually discharging properly okay so well, you you hit it right the first time dirty roller if you're seeing a repetitive mm -hmm. spot it's the exact same and it's the same interval each time well, here's, here's the other question. Bigger laser printers have a dozen rollers in them, 15, 20 rollers. How do you know which one it is? Do you go just tearing that printer apart? No, but, uh, well, I would get one of those cleaning papers <laughs> at this point. Cleaning papers and run it through, okay. Yeah. Well, manufacturers actually thought of this. So what it is, is every single roller inside your laser printer is a different diameter. So what you would do oh. is you measure the distance between the two, two splotches, and you go to the manufacturer's website and you say, you know, you're seeing this distance between the splotches and it'll say, okay, roller 13 is dirty. So you know exactly That's where to go with the printer cool. and which roller to clean. Damn, I needed to take this class a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such good information. How else would we ever know? <laughs> I had a hilarious one where I was I was teaching. I was actually one of my former students became an actual lead instructor, wasn't comfortable at printers and asked me to come pinch hit as an instructor for printers. And I'm giving the instruction as this one student was like at the beginning, like, well, I got this going on with your with my laser printer. What is like, well, your fuser's bad. And he's like, no, that can't be it. And he's sitting there arguing with me at the end. He's like, all right, well, let's go through this and then we'll talk about it. And I get all the way to the end of the presentation. He goes, so my fuser's bad? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's good practical information. Yes, you learn a lot. Okay. Poor print quality, inkjet and impact printers. Yuki, can you read this one for me? Sure. Uh, poor print quality, inkjet and impact printers. Poor print quality for inkjet printers. Check paper type, check ink levels, remove and reinstall cartridge. Follow printer's documentation to clean each nozzle. Clean sponge near carriage rest. Poor print quality for impact printers. Check ribbon, replace if needed. Check the print head for dirt. Spacing on the print head might need to be adjusted. Thank you so much. Um, another screenshot I would do for this too. Um, I recall seeing spacing on print head might need to be adjusted for for quality for impact printers. And there's that clean sponge, sponge near carriage wrist also. Awesome. 
Anything else you'd like to add, Kelly? Uh, not for this yet. When we get done, I'll show the uh, 3D printer just to give a quick okay. show and tell on that real fast. Okay. Uh, I love these. So now you guys have to match the issue. Pause the recording. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so objectives revisited. One, we compared and contrast different types of printers. Two, identify common steps for installing printers. Three, identify common pitfalls when installing a printer. Four, identify common problems that come up with printers and describe how to solve them. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I have one more question, three, two. Uh, so what kind of uh, printer is usable for personal use? And is the ink get dry if you don't use it? Over time, yeah, it can yes. dry um, A lot of people use inkjet or even some people use laser jet printers. It depends on how much printing you do. You don't do a whole what? lot of printing. Mm -hmm. An inkjet might be perfect for you. If you do a lot of printing at your house, okay. a laser printer might be really good for you. Okay. So what is it saving uh, the color, I mean, the ink or what is Well, the... what it is is the, the inkjet has a lower upfront cost, but over time is more expensive because of the ink cartridges. So yeah. if you're not printing a lot, you're not going to be buying a lot of ink cartridges. So if you don't do a lot of printing, maybe like a dozen times per year or something like that, an inkjet mm -hmm. is perfect for you. A laser printer has a much higher upfront cost, but over time, if you're doing a lot of printing, the cost goes down. Oh, okay. Because the cost of toner isn't that bad compared to inkjets. Okay, if you don't print uh, a lot, how long... Can it last, I mean, to get dry, how long? I've had cartridges last two years. Oh, okay. It stays that long without yeah, drying it's, up. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. Mm, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to do a laser printer next myself. But <laughs> if you don't print a lot, go for a laser Oscar. Seriously? Yeah, because you don't have to worry about the cartridges drying out. Yeah, well, what I'm saying, like, is if you're printing like you know a dozen times per year, I bought a I bought a twenty dollar uh, inkjet, and I usually print for my taxes and hmm. maybe a couple other things a year, and I'm still working out the same cartridge from two years ago. <laughs> wow, no, nope, I need a laser jet. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather, I like my laser. My laser was like eighty-five, ninety dollars, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm still using the original cartridge from like three years ago. That's wow. well down from what they used to be. Like laser printers wow. used to be like three, four hundred dollars for a personal use one. Oh yeah. Oh, and for laser printers, do not ever touch the fuser or the yeah, that'll burn you. Don't ever touch the roller either. The uh, the photosensitive drum, the oils on your skin will destroy it. Yeah, obviously ask with the Corona wire. And the power supply in a laser printer is called a HVPSU. And the HV stands for high voltage. So if you wouldn't touch the inside of a power supply on a computer, you absolutely do not want to touch the inside of a power supply on a laser printer. It is far more dangerous. So, because it has to build up that charge for the Corona. Yes, it can kill you. Yes. So field replaceable unit, don't mess with it. Worst case, call a tech. Mm -hmm. certain things we don't play with user same thing 
before you do any work inside of a laser printer, you turn it off and you wait 30 minutes for it to cool down. Seems like the laser printer has a lot of problems. Not it's that it has a lot of problems, just a lot of working, a lot of moving parts. So it's an amazing technology. It's just got a lot of moving parts. Yeah, I prefer it over inkjet. I really do. Print quality, yes, absolutely. All right. Well, that's the end of the session. Thank you, everyone.